Hello everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. I'm Steve and today I'm going to do an overview and a demonstration of this D-Link DCS 510L network camera. It does have pan and tilt and day-night capabilities. Okay everyone, here's everything that comes inside the box. Let me start first with this documentation. Here we find the actual manual here, the quick start guide or the quick install guide. You can see everything and how you install. I'm actually going to go through this with you too so we'll have uh, that to look forward to as well as uh, a little folder that they come with to show you the rest of everything else that you can get inside. We have uh, Connect for More, that's the, the cloud system that they are using, all the different devices that you can get. Uh, main difference between this one and the 5020L is actually the fact that it has the ability to connect to the other devices wirelessly, so it runs as an extender for you. So a wireless extender comes in the other one. This one does not, but it does have all the same features that the other one does. Uh, along with that, we do have a little bit of warranty information, as well as D-Link's GPL code statement. So moving along, we also have the AC adapter that comes inside, obviously giving power to the device. Uh, we also get a Ethernet cable that would come in here and a little mount that is adjustable here at the, at the base to allow the camera to be attached here. Uh, at the bottom, it does have two screw holes here. I'll flip it around the other direction so you can see that. Uh, obviously, the mounting screws that it would require for that and the anchors if you're using it in drywall installation. Uh, on top of that, we do have an alignment sticker to help you figure out exactly where you should be drilling holes uh, for this uh, beautiful base of the camera. Uh, on top of that, we also have the three screws that would be used to do that on this particular device. So let me go ahead and show you a little bit more about this camera. Here's the 5010L itself. The camera does pan left and right here, which I'll show you a little bit later, and will tilt at this joint as well. And if you look really closely here at the center where the camera is, around the outside, you'll notice 10 uh, infrared LEDs that will be used to illuminate the darkness, which it can see up to about 8 meters or 26 feet uh, using that. Now it does use wireless end connectivity. You can notice the antenna here on the back. It is fully connected. It will not unscrew. So if you were deciding maybe later you could get a more powerful antenna, you won't be able to do that. You'd just be able to use the one that comes with. And in my test, it seemed to work just fine. Go ahead and spin that around to the back. So you notice a little bit more about the connectivity. Uh, here you can see the WPS or Wi-Fi protected setup button. And next to that is a reset button to reset this particular unit should you have any kind of problems getting connected or need to reset the password connectivity to it. Also, you'll notice a, a wired connection if you end up using Ethernet, you can use that as well. And the power would get connected here. Now, notice at the very bottom here, I believe that is going to be where the microphone is going to pick up sound because it does use uh, the built-in microphone to start recording or, and or stop recording. And uh, it would use motion detection as well as another way to tell if something was in the room and start recording only then. The very front here, of course, the, the logo from D-Link. And above that is the WPS light letting you know when you have connected as well as the power light to let you know you have power to the device. So first step in setting everything up is you're going to want to plug in your Ethernet cable connected to the router and a computer that would also be connected to that same router and then give it the power. So once that's plugged in, it will start to boot up. While you're doing that, I've gone to a website here. It's actually mydlink.com. And I've, I've already created an account for any of the, you that don't already have one, you'd want to create an account and log into it. At that point, you can select a different camera by going into the support. So let me go over to that with that. No, let me go over that with you, excuse me. So now that we're logged in and I've clicked the support, which is up here at the top right, you can select any one of these cameras. And obviously, we're going to want to select the one we're going to install. In this case, the DCS 510L. Under the wizard, you're going to want to download uh, this particular setup. All of them are the same name, uh, autorun.exe. And what you want to remember is all of them are approximately the same size. So if you decided to buy more than one camera, then you're going to want to download each particular one. Although you might think they're the same size, they're, they're off by a few kilobytes. Uh, bottom line, download it directly for whichever one you want and then run it. Now I'm already running that particular program here and I've already started us off. Uh, click next a couple times to bring us to this point, but essentially nothing needs to change before this. So now at the very first moment, it's actually asking me to plug it in, which I've already done. And click next and plug it into the router, which is the other side of this already being plugged into our router here in the office, and give it the power, which like I said, I've already done. So we're going to wait for the LEDs on the front to light up. In this particular case, they are, so I'm going to click next. 
Now it's asking me again if the LED on the light, uh, uh, the LED light for power is solid green, which it is. So click next. At this point, it's going to search for all cloud cameras on the network connected to this particular router, and it has found it, the DCS 510L. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a password for it, and click next. We're going to let this finish installing, and as soon as it's done, we'll continue. Now, this particular point, the software is asking us how we want to connect this particular wireless or wired network. So do we want this to be able to connect without a wire and not have it running through the entire house? Or do we want it to be able to connect via the Ethernet uh, cable? Now, the bottom line is you have two options if you decide to go wireless. You can use the, the WPS option, which is where we can actually just click the, the button on the back of the router and click the WPS button on the back of this particular device. It'll give you a security pin to type in, and at that point, it'll allow it to connect. So in my case, I'm just going to collect, select the wireless network and pick a particular network. Now, as soon as I'm done with this, we'll skip to the next part. So at this point, it's just telling me to unplug the Ethernet cable and click OK. So I'm just going to go ahead and unplug it and do that exactly. Now it's going to continue restarting to connect to the network, and we'll be able to show you what happens next. Now we're finally on stage three where I'm going to be enabling this particular product and it's asking me if I have a My D-Link account, which I already do, so I'm going to click yes. If you didn't, you would be able to sign up for one, or if you don't want to use the cloud service, you could also say no here. So this particular point, I'm going to need my friend in post to fix this so you can't actually see my email address. and it's going to be adding this to my account. So at one point, I'm going to be able to show you it logging in and showing you all the different cameras that I actually have. So as soon as this is done, I'm going to split to that screen and show you that. Now that setup's finally complete, you can see here that I have been able to enable this particular device on my dlink.com, and I am able to actually rename the device. I'm going to keep it the DCS 510L because I have about three other cameras on my account and uh, I don't want there to be any kind of confusion. So go ahead and click Finish. Now let me log in to my D-Link and show you what that looks like. So now I'm logged into my D-Link.com. You can see I have three other cameras in addition to the 510L, but right now we're currently connected to that, and the other three aren't connected to the network, so currently they show as disconnected with the small red X. The green one of the check mark obviously means it's up and running. So just walk you through what it looks like when you're using it. Uh, you have the camera left and right, uh, obviously, to pan it to the left and right. You can see our TV monitor in the back there, picking up what Kyle is currently filming. If I pan to the right, you can actually see a little Paul over there. Hello, Paul. Hello. <laughs> and just for a moment, I'm going to un untick the sound off so that this way you can hear it because I'm right in front of the speakers and it'll start back feeding back to the microphone. But just so you can hear it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'll shut that back off again. Here you'll find the night view option it's set to auto right now. You probably want to leave it there. You can turn it on or off if you prefer, as well as being able to take a snapshot. This will take a picture of whatever the camera's currently looking at in this particular instance. It happens to be Kyle making faces. Uh, now I can turn the angle as well, speeding up how quickly it turns. Oh, actually, I think I just slowed it down by minimizing the, and I think it was on large earlier. Click that over. Yeah, just barely go up a little bit. Oh, apparently up goes a lot faster than down. And from there I can also change the zoom and digital zoom up to four times as well as the different contrast, uh, brightness, excuse me, up and down. Uh, Paul looking very bright there. Going over to the settings. It's going to take a moment. Here's where I can change the camera name. Tells me my D-Link number, uh, the model number of this particular device, the MAC address for this particular device, when it was activated, and whether or not I want to connect to this thing wirelessly or not. It can also send me email notifications uh, as well, letting me know. I can set it up for motion detection so that as things move across the camera, it'll start recording as well as some other settings like what I set up for the administrator password for this particular device and the, I, the ability to remove this device from my current setup. So here I am in the uh, iOS version of the app, the My D-Link Lite is the name of this particular app from D-Link. And you can see the three devices we talked about before that are currently disconnected that are on my account, but here is the one that we're using currently.
So let me click on that to get connected to it. Whoa, as you can hear, the sound was streaming. So of course, it was putting it out from the speakers here, getting picked up from the microphone again, and then just looping. So I can click a button and take a picture. It's asking, since this is the first time I've ever done it, if it would allow access to this app to my pictures. So now it took a picture and now put that in the rest of my album pictures. I can scoot over a little bit to the right here. It is at 400, 480p, which is the, the, the highest resolution on this particular camera. I want to mention too, it's 640 by 40 resolution at, at 30 FPS and also is transmitting at H.264 or MJPEG video codecs. Um, now, on top of that, this is of course an iPhone, but you can also use it on an iPad or with an Android device with an app for remote viewing. Uh, let me go ahead and turn this sideways just so I can show you the wider wider frame version of this. Yeah, see if I can get my hand out of the way there. That is just horrible. Let me hold it up for you. Yeah, if I can get it without reflecting it. So as you can see, I'm actually looking at it full screen without anything hiding the image. But I can click on it again and actually move this to the right or left as before. Or I can recenter it. Move it one more time. Oops. How's that? Okay. And then I can click this button to recenter everything right back to normal. So on the bottom right here, you'll see the information button I can click and actually show you a little bit of information about what the stream's actually doing currently, uh, the frame rate that it's currently getting, as well as the bit rate that it's currently streaming at and the speed in kilobits per second. And also, it does night vision mode. So hopefully, Paul, can you catch the lights for me? Sure. Kyle, can you hit the main studio lights for me? Thank you, sir. Now, night vision mode should be enabled right now. Actually, I can see the IRLE, <laughs> Kyle, with the national uh, emergency uh, secret secret sign. What is it? The secret sign for emergency? SOS? No, never mind. Somebody on the uh, comment that. <laughs> Kyle, thank you very much. Showing, uh, showing us a little bit of what you could see in the dark if you were actually watching Kyle in the studio. It's actually how he normally mans the camera. <laughs> okay guys, one last thing I want to mention that you will need to have a computer with certain requirements in order to activate this particular device. I want to mention that it has to be 1.3 gigahertz processor with 128 megabytes of RAM running Windows XP Vista 7 or 8. And if you have a system that runs this, then you'll definitely be able to operate this particular camera. And that pretty much wraps up this demonstration and overview of the DCS 5010L from D-Link. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon.